Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Respiratory Issues, Episode 1, Croup. After viewing this episode, participants will review the pathophysiology of croup. Participants will also review the identification and assessment of croup versus epiglottitis and bronchiolitis. Finally, participants will review the pre-hospital management of croup. Croup is a very common disease of childhood, especially in the, um, in the winter months, and it happens usually in kids under five, but the virus that causes it can actually happen in adults, although it comes across as a common cold when that happens. And um, croup is an inflammation of the, uh, the upper airway structures that's caused by a, a particular virus. Croup is fairly common in the field in the pediatric population. I might see uh, six or seven cases in a year. I find it more prevalent in the fall and winter months. Croup uh, can be identified fairly easily. You find a patient who has a barking, like seal-like cough. Uh, it's more prevalent at night. Uh, they can be stridulous or having stridorous respirations, uh, increased work of breathing. It's usually, you know, it's the phone call at nighttime and the, the kid has, has a barky cough and some parents will bring them outside and they get better and um, usually the parents will say that the child's had an upper respiratory infection for a couple of days. Um, the inflammation that is caused by the virus that causes croup um, causes um, a strider and um, difficulty breathing in the pediatric population. Uh, often there's a um, barking cough associated and also a fever. Croup is a common disease caused by a virus. Croup is most common in children under the age of five, although anyone can have the virus. Croup causes inflammation of the upper respiratory tract, specifically the voice box. Inflammation causes labored respiration, strider, a barky cough, and or fever. Croup is most prevalent in the fall and winter and can be exacerbated at night. Croup and epiglottitis are two very different disease processes. Croup is a um, very common uh, viral illness that um, occurs more often in childhood currently. However, uh, epiglottitis is caused by a bacteria that there's a good immunization against, so we rarely see it uh, currently anymore. And epiglottitis is an inflammation of the epiglottis, which can lead to airway obstruction. Whereas, although croup does have some inflammation of the upper airway structures, it very rarely, if ever, leads to full airway obstruction. Croup versus epiglottitis. Epiglottitis is life-threatening, so if an EMS provider sees a child squatting and drooling, that is, that is life-threatening and could potentially need to be intubated. Um, their epiglottis, their airway is, is swollen, where the croup, it's the voice, the voice box that is um, swollen. So epiglottitis is truly an emergency. Bronchiolitis is another viral type of illness we, we see. It. And, and NAPs don't usually help with bronchiolitis. So if EMS are listening to the lungs and they hear a lot of scattered crackles, it probably is bronchiolitis and it's viral. But it's, it's the young kids, the infants, who um, may need to have oxygen. That's why they get admitted is for oxygen. And, and sometimes if there's a little bit of wheeze, they'll get treatment, but mainly it's to monitor their respiratory status. So that's something that EMS can, is helpful for them to differentiate is the, the crackling is a good sign of bronchiolitis. This chart represents the major differences between epiglottitis, croup, and bronchiolitis. For the pre-hospital provider, in almost all cases of croup, it can be managed with a saline nebulizer if that meets your um, protocol. Um, however, in severe cases where there's severe strider at rest, then it's managed with an epinephrine nebulizer. Um, some cases of croup where there's just a barking cough or there's only strider when the child becomes agitated, uh, those cases do not require an epinephrine nebulizer. There is also, uh, one of the mainstay treatments of croup also involves the use of steroids. In some EMS regions, steroids are given pre-hospital. The, the typical steroid that is given is Decadron, although other steroids can be used. 
you don't always have to treat croup. If the child has a mild barky cough but is not in any respiratory distress, it is viral in a sugar way. However, if you're dealing with a child maybe with a history of asthma or preemie, child with an underlying medical condition, the, um, the croup is, is treated with epinebs because there's swelling in the, um, the vocal cords, so that's why maybe the voice can be hoarse. So it's not life-threatening, but you can give steroids to help with the swelling. And if there are striders, then the epinebs will help that. And of course, some kids do have to be ad admitted for continuous treatments, but that's not always the case. If we hear that a child is striderous, we give epinebs. EMS, of course, can assess their oxygen level, provide them with oxygen. To treat or manage a patient with croup, or presents like croup, you can give humidified oxygen, mostly supportive care measures, and uh, timely transportation. Just last week, the family who presented to the, to the desk with this child, you could hear the strider across the room, and you could hear the barking cough. And immediately we started epinebs and just monitored the child's uh, respiratory status. The kid did not look like he was in any distress at all just has a terrible cough and it's it's very frightening for the parents. So as you're providing their child with treatments and put them on a pulse ox, you're reassuring the parents that the child will be okay. So that when you give the epinebs, you need to now monitor them for rebound and if you have to give them another one. So they need to stay in your emergency department for four to six hours and potentially could get admitted if they're not improving. The pre-hospital management for croup includes supportive care high flow oxygen, humidified oxygen, and monitor for signs of distress. If symptoms are not severe, nebulizers are not required. Pending regional protocol, the provider could give nebulized saline, nebulized epinephrine, and or steroids to reduce inflammation. Last week I had a patient that presented with croup. It was a three-year-old uh, male that uh, had stridus respirations, barking seal cough, accessory muscle use, tracheal tugging, and um, retractions in the chest gave humidified oxygen, brought him into a cool night air that seemed to relieve some of the, uh, the increased work of breathing. And then I proceeded to give a epineb. It was a 0.25 megs per kg, uh, up to a max dose of five milligrams. You get an appropriate weight on a patient that age, you gotta use a Braslow tape. You can guesswork, uh, take the, patient, the patient's parents' word for the weight, but you're better to go with something documented like a Braslow tape. To identify and the pearls of wisdom I have to relate to other paramedics, it sounds much worse than it usually is. Most of these patients present really bad. It sounds worse. It's really not that bad. It is important for all pre-hospital care providers to remember that any airway issue is serious. However, croup can sound worse than it actually is. It is important for EMS providers to remain calm. After viewing this episode, participants will review the pathophysiology of croup. Participants will also review the identification and assessment of croup versus epiglottitis and bronchiolitis. Finally, participants will review the pre-hospital management of croup.